Alright everybody, and welcome back to Minecraft Feed the Beast Unleashed, where this time we do not have a face cam, unfortunately, because it is very rainy outside. Now you might be asking yourself, are you a caveman? Do you rely on electricity for everything and natural light? Well, unfortunately I do. I do rely on natural light for the lighting of where I record, and since it is very dark and gloomy outside, you would be able to detect not even the slightest smile or grin from me. So I decided not to include it all together, which is good for me because it makes editing time and the file size a whole lot smaller, so it uploads faster. Anyways, we're back today, and I want to accomplish a few things that we have been dawdling on for quite a long time. One of those being the Ender Tanks. And now I believe we have one of these. The Ender Tanks, as you might expect, alongside with a Ender Chest, allows you to transfer, transfer, transfer liquids from different dimensions or different spaces in the same time. But in this case, we're going to be using it to transfer lava from the Nether to the overworld here, so we will be able to make unlimited power via geothermal generators. Now I've prepared everything we need to build the other ender tank, which we shall do right now, and I'd like to show you a cool little new feature that I stumbled upon, or I didn't really stumble upon it, I saw somebody else do it and I thought, noise! Why can't I do that? Anyways, let's go make ourselves one of those little colander things as well as grab ourselves an ender pearl. It'd be quite awkward if we did not have ourselves an ender pearl. Anyhow, as I said, it is quite raining today, and I absolutely love the rain. I don't know if anyone else loves the rain. I know a lot of people in Minecraft absolutely hate the rain for whatever reason. That is gelatinous slime, and we do, we do have an ender pearl. I'm just going to grab several of those right now because I'm not entirely sure if we're going to need more than one of them for what else we're going to do because I do want to use multiple ender chests once we start moving all of the ender tanks and our, or what they call the quarry, the quarry up to the overworld for many, many days, so we will be able to do some cool material transfer and stoof. Anyways, we have plenty of iron ingots, and I'm going to see if I remember the recipe for the cauldron, or the colander, whatever it's called. I think that's the cauldron. Yes, it is. And now, if I go right over here to the ender tank, and I shift-click on this, it should put everything in there. It did not put everything in there. What if I do it like this? That makes the ghosting effect. I know that much, but I know if I shift-click, it's... Oh, oh, it's not working. Control click. No. All right. Oops, I just gave myself an infinite tank. Or what? Infinite giving exterminator the infinite ender tank. Okay. Not sure what that means. Let's just go on with this. Oh, wait. I need a wool. I need a piece of wool. Hang on a second. I don't know why it said infinite. I just clicked on it to do the recipe and it said infinite. Hmm. Not sure about that. Anyways, all we need now is a piece of wool to do this. And now I said I will cut down on all the time of me crafting everything by just not doing it all together. But since we've only crafted one of these before, and it's been a while since we've done that, might as well do it one more time just for the running. Especially because I have everything together, and if I was to cut, it would just be unnecessary in editing because it would be all, Alright, let's go away, and then about 10 seconds later I'd have everything I needed. So, that makes things a bit difficult. Now, oh, do they not, s hold on, didn't give it to me. I just built it and it didn't give one. What? Hang on. I built one. Does this have something to do with me right clicking on it? Okay. Hang on. Let me resolve this real quick. Okay, I was not about to make another one of those using precious materials, so I just decided to give myself one. I used the materials to make it, so I guess it's only fair. Now, with the ender tanks, there are two different types of ender tanks, or not ender tanks, ender chests. There's one that's from the native Minecraft, and there's one from ender storage, and I'm not really sure what the you know precise difference is, aside from the fact that this ender chest requires more blaze rods. I don't even think this one does. It's just you know obsidian and the eye of ender, so I really don't know what's going on with that at the moment. However, I did want to take a break from the ender tank biz right now and show you something that's been going on. So, if you remember, we were working with our bees for a very long time. I filled up this chest with plenty of different variants of bees that we have collected, and I've even bred a few new ones. There's, um, we've got a steadfast, we have some modest drones, and we have some new ones that are bees that we did not start off with originally. So, breeding different types of bees together did produce some pretty favorable results. However, we do have a bit of a problem. You can see these bees are doing their thing. They're pretty much running out right now. We've got our mystical meadows and all. Now, you can see above us, usually the leaves, if you're familiar with forestry, will change tones. They'll change the way they look when they've become, um, what, are the, what is that called? Cultivated? No, um, 
I don't know what it's called when they, when bees do things to flowers. It's not pollinated, pollinated maybe, perhaps something like that. Anyways, even with my texture pack right now, which I'm using Shvax or you know native vanilla Minecraft texture, I can't tell there's a difference in the tones of leaves. So I pretty much just have to look around with the what am I looking at mob? Like for example, this one right here, tile dot leaves dot zero, and it's a forestry thing. So I pretty much just have to look around. We've got another one right around here somewhere. I'm not sure where I found that one. However, we do have a couple of leaves that we can graft and get a new sapling from so hopefully they'll give us something nice otherwise we might just get junk and that's an apple oak okay so it's going to be tough to distinguish these trees and um, that's going to be a consistent problem but let me just take a moment to see if I can't find another one. Otherwise, I will just fast forward and grab all the ones that I can possibly detect. Because this really just comes down to me looking at every single different leaf on a tree and saying, Hey, are you uh, are you one of those special ones? Hmm, maybe? Yes, no. But uh, yeah, I guess I'll just look around for a handful more, at least until my grafter breaks. And we'll be right back. Alright everybody, so I went through until our grafter broke and I grabbed some new saplings. Now, we found plenty of apple oaks, which I would assume drop apples at a more reasonable rate than normal oak trees. But we also found this interesting one, the silver birch. So, I took the liberty of cutting down a few trees around the apiaries to free up some space. I noticed that the bees have been depositing some very beautiful flowers. We've got hydrangeas, we've got some violets, what are these over here? Some tulips, and we've got many, many more swamp flowers probably a direct descendant of Shrek himself. Anyhow, I decided to cut down some trees so we can make some room for our brand new trees. So I'm going to be putting down some of these meticulously around, but I also will leave plenty of other trees around like birch and other ones so our breeding can take place at an elevated rate, even with different types of trees springing up. So of course, leaving some different birches around, I believe when you put down a normal sapling, it's louder than a <laughs> one of the special ones. I'm not sure. Is that, listen, like right here, if I was to put down a birch, for example, here's the birch, okay? hear that and then here's apple oak much quieter and it looks like a piece of flint when you break it that's really strange interesting i don't know what that's all about anyways let's put down um hmm, i guess we'll just put down a birch right here just so we can have some cool little breeding going on between some different trees i'm not sure if i filled the space for our old oak right here no we have not where was that right here all right looking good so these are apiaries right here doing their job and i guess while we're at it we might as well just clear them out and put in some brand new guys what we got here an eldritch princess i have no idea what an eldritch one is yeah let's breed them with a meadows i think it's going to work okay an eldritch i had no idea that was a bee i've looked very very little into what you can actually do with these apiaries aside from just breeding bees there's a cultivated drone We'll just keep on with that. Get some more of those. Still a mystical. We'll put them back in with a meadow, see what we can get. And as I breed these bees more and more, I attempt to put as few combinations of the same type together. So, in other words, I don't like putting mystical princesses with mystical drones. I like trying to mix it up and put them with cultivated and different types of bees so we don't have to have an overflow of a certain type. Like, so we don't have tons of meadows drones. However, we can have plenty of mystical drones and different types of bees in general because I think having many, many bees of a different type is going to be our ticket into more and more advanced bees. And I think that's all for right now. So let me just grab out all this honeycomb, honeycomb, honeycomb. So we will be able to do some cool squeezing and get some honey power on the road in due time. Unfortunately, however, when we use our geothermal generator, I don't think they provide power in the same respect that these peat engines do. It may, I'm not exactly sure, and I guess that's something I'll have to look into in time. However, I did take the liberty, I'll say it one more time, of getting some supplies together while I cut it and grab, cut, cut it? Not sure if that's a word. As I went and grabbed some different materials. So our inventory is rather cluttered. However, I do have everything I need to make a geothermal generator. As we can see right here, let's just give our little self a ghosting right here. I actually don't have the refined iron. I'm sure I've got it around here somewhere. I've got plenty of refined iron in one of these chests. Maybe in this little chest over here that has all of our processed ore. Hmm, guess not. Let me go check downstairs real quick because I'm sure there's some down here. And I don't believe I did anything with the new storage area over there, but in between episodes I have been making more and more storage drives so we don't have to worry about running out of storage space. Ah, there we go. Refined iron. All right, let's get to work. I think I actually remember this recipe for once. I know I'm very surprised, much as you would be. 
have you been watching this for a while all right here we go geothermal generator so i'm not sure where i'm going to put this down i assume or i imagine rather that kitten has found its way into my room that's going to be a problem <laughs> take the liberty of putting in some eucalyptus doors nice and purple did i just say purple nice and pink rather and this is our engine bay room in here now i don't believe that you are able to do straight power to this i think you need build craft stuff which um is a different ball game altogether so i think i may have to fuel an engine a different way I, i'm trying to think of a way to do this because i know you can do it before and i know there's a, a certain type of converter you can use and i may have to look it up real quick but i know i can uh, fuel an engine a certain way and then i can pump out the power i don't exactly remember how to do it so i think i'm gonna look it up real quick and then we'll be right back all right so i did some research and i found a very complicated way to do what i was talking about doing and then i stumbled upon a very you know straightforward solution to what we were originally doing so the more complicated way is to make something called an energy bridge from what i can see energy bridge okay it doesn't exist never mind i guess we only have one solution then so as i was talking about earlier there was a bit of piping involved which was what i was thinking hey look it's raining just like it is in real life oh minecraft you have absorbed me completely anyways species discovered branch discovered what yes i'll take it anyways what i was thinking we would have to do is not exactly what we had to do so what i'm talking about here is we have our power relay we don't actually have to do any piping whatsoever, aside, you know, from just putting in some copper cabling just to get everything sorted out, which may be a good idea. So for the time being, I'm going to go and just slam down the geothermal generator right here. And we should be able to just line up an ender tank right next to it. Now, there are certain different colors with the way you can do this. I'm not sure if blue is send or red is receive. I find blue to be a more submissive color, so I feel like it would take anything red has to give. So I'm thinking red is send, especially because we're about to go to the nether, so let's say the end. Not quite, we have not even found that portal yet. However, it would be nice to beat the ender dragon and the wither too, to get our portal gun, which will be something quite fancy. Because the portal gun, if you remember from my other series I was doing, the Curse of the Island Survival, which many of you loved, and I, I loved doing it, it was so much fun, but we did have a mod called the Portal Gun, and that was a slam hit. Absolutely loved it, I would love to get it again. So we need one more lever, or lever, depending on how you'd like to say it. And we just need a piece of cobblestone for this, obviously. Obviously, spelled with a B. And there we go, flip it around, just kidding. There we go. So we can just slam away some of this other stuff here as I shake my mouse profusely as if I have some sort of shaky disease. A shaky disease. That sounds mildly encroaching. Anyhow, what do we got? We all ready to head out? Got a little B on us just for some good luck. Got a B safe, you know what I'm talking about. All right, let's get into the nether. Now, it's about as simple as just pumping stuff in. Speaking of pumping, I could probably use a waterproof pipe or two. Yes, I remember things last moment. What about you? There we go. That should be waterproof pipe, even though it's lava. So I'd imagine lava-proof piping would be necessary. But hey, what can I say? Oh, look. Species discovered. Hmm. I'm not sure if that's a part of what am I looking at, Mod? The Wyla or Wayla? Or it's just telling me that because it loves the way I look in this armor. Not exactly sure. I believe I have everything I need to get started with this. Hopefully I didn't knock a pigment when I came in here last time. It does not appear so. I've got the redstone engines, I've got the pump, I've got the waterproof piping, and I've got the lever and my ender tank. All right, this this is solid. I think we've got all we're looking for. Now, I navigated this earlier today, but that does not mean I am not prone to you know, screw-ups. And also, I did have a mention of adding a couple mods on top of the Feed the Beast pack, two of which being the Morph mod as well as the Orspawn mod. Orspawn is a massive mod, whereas Morph mod just allows you to morph into just about a little everything with a tiny voice crack on the side. Anyways, um, Orspawn, there is not a texture pack comp compatibility. There we go, that sounds a bit right. Compatibility pack with Shvaxpeer BD Craft, which would mean all the mobs and items from it would be Minecraft vanilla textured. 
Same way with Morph Mod. Morph Mod does not have a 1.5.2 version that I know of that I've been able to find easily. So that is obviously a hindrance on our efforts. So as far as I know, I won't be adding any mods right now, unfortunately. However, this does look like a pretty good spot for our lava. As far as I know, actually, I have no idea the depth on this stuff right here. Let me see if I can do it. No, so I can't even hit the bottom with this. So I think this is actually a decent place to start. And we can just start on the opposite side I do want to make this symmetrical but since I'm going to be here so infrequently does it really matter uh, exactly that's what I was thinking <laughs> I'm glad you I'm glad you agree I like it when people agree with me I love being surrounded by yes men all right where's that pump right here fantastic I'm afraid if I press shift too many times I'm going to get the infamous sticky keys if you don't if she doesn't know what sticky keys is bro she's too young for you I, I miss sticky keys they used to come up at the worst times and I would be angry they taught me how to how to be a reserved gentleman, how not to be impatient, <laughs> or something like that. Anyways, let's get our stuff going like so. Let's just turn it on real quick, just so it can start doing its jazz. There we go, get it going at two different ticks. I think if I do it like this, it'll, nope, okay. I don't think you need a wooden pipe to pump it out like that. All right, so there we go. Red should be send, and we'll see if any lava comes out, hopefully. Hopefully it will start, oh, there it comes, there it comes. Now let's see if it's, oh, white, white, white. Do I need to correspond it to something different? Hmm, not sure if it's sending or not. Can I, it doesn't seem to be a right click command about it. Um, oh yeah, I think it just sent. Yeah, because look, it's gone. Oh, you can see a cool little end animation there. I love that. All right, well, actually I just sent it back, I think. Or is that the tank filling up? Nope, it's filling up. All right, let's go home real quick and check it out. All right, it's the moment of truth. Do we have, oh, it's right next to it. Now, as far as I know, it does transfer automatically. If the block is immediately next to it, I have been told that it is able to transfer out, but it's not looking that way. Okay, let me sever the link through. Oh, wait, okay, no, that just made it brighter, I think. All right, hang on. Let me try something with a wrench real quick. Because I don't know if it's the right face of the geothermal generator. I've seen it done before. I know this works. But it may just be the wrong face. Maybe of the ender tank itself. Or maybe of the geothermal generator. I know I have a wrench around here somewhere. There it is. I believe I can just switch the face of the machine. And it might work. Might, might, because I know with industrial craft, the way you pump something into a machine is very specific on certain things, but I'm not sure if the geothermal generator is one of those machines. So, let's just give it a try real quick. Shift the face. Oh, never mind, that did not quite work. That just picks it up. I'm pretty sure, I thought you could uh, switch the face with that. Anyways, let's try it like this. Okay, it's not working. Hmm. Let me try something with the ender tank real quick. Maybe if I switch that around. It looks like the ender or the lava is actually preserved in it. That is cool. Here we go. Let's try it. Does it Does it work it? Does it work it? It doesn't. What is that? That's cool. I got some little buttons on top. In other news. <laughs> I may just have to make a separate pumping system because I was told that you were able to do this and you can just pump it right in. Uh, you don't even have to pump it in, it's just seamless. As soon as you put it right next to it, you're good to go. So uh, I guess I'm just gonna go have to make another pump real quick and I can go pump all the stuff right out and into the generator. So yeah, I'm gonna go do that. Alrighty, got all the supplies ready to go and it's time to try it again. Seems like the tank is filling up nicely. A bit slow, albeit, but hey, unlimited power has a price, I'm sure, anyways. I'm not sure if I actually need a physical pump on top of this to pump it out, or if I just need the engines to do it. So I'm going to reset this engine real quick, and then hopefully we'll be good to go. I'm just glad the system is currently working, which was more than I expected it to actually be going at, so let me just see real quick if I can attach a pipe. Okay, that seems to be working, and I'm short of pipe actually, so let me just move this up one. I don't believe there's any other configuration. I'm not even going to mess with it real quick. I'm just going to put it in right because the lava transfers regardless. All right. Let's try it like so. And, of course, we are going to have to pump it out. I made a few too many engines. But, hey, does it need a wooden pipe for me to pump it out? 
Oh, goodness gracious. I am just stuck in the middle of a frenzy right now, am I not? If I don't have one, I can easily make one. Just need some pipe waterproof, which I'm sure I have. But I'm also convinced that I have a wooden waterproof pipe around here somewhere. Uh, guess not. Great. <laughs> Do I not have any pipe waterproofing either? Alright. This appears to be the episode of cutting more so than any other, so let me go make the cactus green real quick to do this, and we'll be right back. Alright, one cut later, and we have the wooden waterproof pipe. It's really great that we have our cacti back going now, so we have ourselves a full self-sufficient farm. Alright, so as far as I know, we should be able to pump it out like so. Our engine should connect to it kind of like this, exactly like that, and let's hope this redstone signal doesn't oh there we go there we go oh yep I see the lights turning on hang on a sec not seeing anything happening here it says the generators on it's powered up it's powered up yes and as far as I know this is unlimited power we can just throw our bees in here we can throw anything we want and guess what I kind of want my meadows drone yes please and that is how you do it now we're going to make a couple more drives in between this next episode just so we have plenty of space because right now we're using 21 of our 63 types and we're kind of a bit of a way there with our bites in total. You know, just a little bit, not totally, but hey, we are looking fantastic. Oh, looks like the power is going to run out rather quickly, unfortunately. Hmm. I guess we're going to have to wait for the pumps to be going full speed before we can really rely on this system because right now it seems like it's going to run out of power rather quickly you can see it turning on and off it's jittering right now because it does not have enough lava to really get the system going so that's something we'll have to resolve in time anyways i think it'll do it for this episode of minecraft feed the beast unleashed thank you all very much for watching and i'll see you all very soon